Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, we're here in sunny Brisbane with my dad, Milton Wordley, and Hugh Hartshaw. And I thought it was a great opportunity to uh, sit down with these guys because we've got 100 years of photography together. And basically, if you've been in the industry a while or you're just starting, the industry is kind of, at the moment, it's, it's not in a great place. And I thought it would be a good opportunity just to talk about how we think the industry is going and basically just have a little chat. And uh, before I go on, a little bit about Milton. Milton Wordley has been at the top of the commercial photography industry for the last 45 years, making a start as a copy boy in Adelaide and then a press photographer at the Evening Standard and the Daily Express in London at 22. And in his late 20s, returned to Adelaide uh, and made the shift to commercial photography and ran the Southlight Studio, which at one stage employed 12 photographers. Milton was one of the first Australians to receive a Master in Photography and one of the last big projects uh, he's been working on is the, the Day in the Life of Grange, is that right? Year in the Life. The year in the Life of Grange. And now he lives down in Aldinga with his partner Anne-Marie and his third child, Myrtle. Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle. And, uh, and Hugh, Hugh also started as a press photographer. Um, and he was headhunted by Milton. Agreed? It's so, all good. Yes, I think Dad saw a fair oh, bit of talent head. in Hugh to be at the Adelaide Advertiser. Um, Hugh hung out at Southlight for five years. Something yeah, like that, that time. Yeah. Four, four or five years. And then made the big leap to the Big Apple. And with his Australian swagger, he, <laughs> he firmly found his, his feet in uh, Manhattan in the first year, landed a big worldwide advertising campaign for Shivers Regal. Yep. And basically worked in New York for 15 years, um, working for some of the biggest companies in, in America. Yep. And called it a day, 15 years later, and now lives in Calborough with Polly and Finn. But the interesting thing about Hugh is he still works for majority American clients. Is that right? Yeah, Pretty much absolutely. exclusively. All Americans? Yeah. All, yeah. All, all working, I travel from Australia, yeah. Perfect. And a little bit about myself. Uh, I started as a press photographer as well, went to London, did a bit of paparazzi, did a bit of commercial, um, and then went back to Sydney, New York, Los Angeles, travelled around in my 20s, and now I have a Spanish wife, and I predominantly shoot stock photography in Madrid. Right. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. All right. So for the gear nuts out there, what are you guys shooting on? What's your your main camera and your go-to lens? I can get it here. Maybe mm -hmm. not. Well, I, 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 I'm shooting with Sony cameras uh, and uh, Sony A9. And the go-to lens would be the 24 to 105. And, um, just just pure simplicity. New mill. I shot with Nikon's for 45 years mm -hmm. and recently having used both Nikon and Fuji for 10 years because I'm now retired and I travel a bit, the Fuji made sense because it was lighter and I now use a Fuji X-T1 and the new X-H1 uh, which I have to say seems to be getting as big as the Nikon. And I don't really have a go-to lens. No. I'd like to think that I, I bought a whole lot of primes and I was talking to Michael Coyne the other day who's one of Fuji's ambassadors and we spoke about this and he said yeah yeah we all like these prime lenses and but often we just pick up the zoom. It's the sheer speed of it you know. Yeah yeah. Well you've both gone to mirrorless Yep. so you, do you think the digital SLRs are done? What do you, you think the future? I just hope you're better at taking photographs now and making tea. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Let me just check it's actually recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. Um, so do you think in five years we're still going to see Nikon making the D6 or the D7 or whatever? Do you think that's still going to be around? something. Because Shane showed me one the other night and he's been a Nikon shooter for 40 years and he loves it. Loves what? The new mirrorless Nikon. 
Yeah, um, look, look oh. I see, I, 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 I... Had they had it, I would have stayed with Nikon. I don't... I, I can only speak about what's applicable to me. See, it's, you know, like, it, it, everyone has their, their thing. From my perspective, I, 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 I could never see myself going back to a, a, a SLR camera with it. Just sheer size, you know, people... I've heard people complain about the size of the Sony. It's like, it's, it's the beautiful thing for me, you know. The, um, so, I, I only ever address things like that, what do you like? It's like, it works for me. That's, I, I, can't, I can't ever speak for, like, where yeah. it's going to go. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I like, get into those arguments and it, 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 all, of, all of my gear is extraordinarily tailored to the way, what do I need? That's all. Oh, totally. Mm. And, yeah. and, and it's, the, the Sony's are extraordinary for, for what I need to do. Sheer speed. I know. Yeah. I know, it was a very expensive weekend that you yeah. house. <laughs> I went to Hugh's house, what, maybe six months ago for the yeah. weekend, and I just bought the 850 and was in love with it, and then I left, uh, left Hugh's house, and about two days later I bought all Sony's. So it was an expensive <laughs> weekend. Um, but fulfilling. Yes, and yeah. I love it, and it is it is exactly right. If you, the reason why I changed over is because it's got autofocus and video, and also like the focus peaking and and the tilty screen and all the things that just it just is easier to use. Weight, weight, size, easier easier to use. Files are clean. I don't know. I love it. Yeah. Um, best job and last job you guys have been working on. Best job ever and the last job you've done. Gee, you go first. <laughs> you, a, you already got these questions. You should just spit it out. <laughs> Come on. Uh, probably my most satisfying job was the book that I did on Grange, You and the Life of Grange. And for those that don't know anything about Grange, Grange is Australia's most famous wine. It retails for nearly a thousand bucks a bottle. And uh, it was first vintage was in 1951, which is the same year I was born and I spent a year documenting the story of a wine. Um, it came from an exhibition that I had and I just decided I didn't want to do much more commercial photography anymore and so I went out and limb and thought I'd do an exhibition and the exhibition became a book. Um, but you'll see the link just here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as far as other jobs go, there has been so many there's no real highlights. No. You know, well, I'm, I'm in my 50th year as a working photographer, so... Okay. It was kind of your well, last big job as well, more or less. Yes. It's, it's uh, yeah, good. Although I worked my butt off for two years to pay for it, so. <laughs> but it did turn a profit. Just broke even the other day. Um, for those of you who ever think about making a book, don't let the printer talk you into printing 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pretty full shed at home, do you? No, I've actually sold like 1500 and I've sold them nearly all. Wow, that's extraordinary. Mm. And just broke even. Didn't make any money, but had an amazing experience. And I think that's yeah, kind of what photography is about. You know, um, it's it's the you get the best seat in the house. Yeah. You may not get any more get paid that well for it, but you do get the best seat in the house. Most definitely. Yeah. And Hugh, um, it's it's <clears throat> always hard to. Um, nail down the best one but one, one of the highlights would have to be the Croatian tourism um, where I was just given um, given a list of places and it was all paid for and um, off you go just go and take take the pictures you want to take and uh, Croatia is a pretty special place as well but not only that um, some really beautiful pictures and some really amazing people to work with it was that um, that really comes to mind and what was the other part of it and the last last job the one the last job we're, we're on yeah. is right now I, I i can't tell the client but um we're american client we're shooting here in brisbane queensland yeah and i just struggling yeah <laughs> i'm jet lagged i just flew in from madrid to be hughes number one Assistant, go to. <laughs> um, I forgot that you said stuff about Croatia because uh, you know one of the main reasons I went to Croatia 
is because you said. Oh, okay. And I met my wife in Croatia. He, now. he got a lot. <laughs> yes, you owe me a lot. <laughs> so uh, that's good. Um, it is beautiful, isn't it? Croatia's amazing. Yeah. Just stand it. Like, the island, you could spend a month there. Oh. Just amazing place. The Dalmatian coast is. Um, best story on a job. Best fuck up, best, uh, oh. best, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. well, should I tell that one? Yeah, on? that one. Um, all right. So m my best screw up was working for Milton. Um, and let me, let me add that, that there's always screw ups, but, um, we were shooting uh, quite a, quite a, an important, it was an annual report and, and, and for a big call and we were photographing South, the CEO. Yeah. Okay. So the, the board and the CEO. Uh, at a winery in, in, in South Australia and we, um, you know, enormous amount of equipment, pro photos, the whole bit. And, uh, back when you shot film. Back when we shot film and we, we loaded up the car and went... <laughs> An hour and a half We drove, drove up to the, the winery um, and in the midst of setting up, I probably would have turned a numerous shades of green realising... Um, <laughs> That I'd left all the light stands back at um, back at the studio. <laughs> the whole lot. But the hardest part was fessing up to it, and and to Milton's credit, uh, he didn't lose his rag. But um, we we there was a lot of gaffer tape. We uh, yes, yes yes yes. <laughs> Quite amazing that that that, that we pulled that off. We were using a dolly that day. Yeah yeah. yeah. I know. It was amazing. Was that with shooting with movement too? Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. We were doing a shot of the board and walking through the winery. It was the Penfolds, the yeah. winery in Neriel. And uh, we found out about half an hour before the board was about to arrive and we got five minutes <laughs> with the board. We had no light stands. I don't even know if we had a tripod, I can't remember. <laughs> but you got there. No, we must have had a tripod. We got there. Yeah, we got there. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, best wine you've drunk this year? This is probably more to Milton, but uh, the, the wine, most standout wine you've the yeah. wine you bought from Spain last night was pretty good, but probably for me would be a Wendery 2005 Cabernet Malbec, mm -hmm. which is a classic uh, blend uh, from a winery, a very highly regarded winery in the Clare Valley. And the other day, Stephen Panel, who's got quite a long association with. Wendere and runs a winery called SC Panel. He won the Bushing King wine with a similar blend that he made in honour of that particular wine. It was a stunning one. I'll have to try it. Yeah. Next time I'm back. Yeah. And Hugh. I don't know the names of them. What were they in um, in, in Madrid? That, I mean, I had um, Look at probably. four of the best meals I've had in my life. In um, in in we. We drank the Mugger um, Grand Reserva, 2009 or 8, which is a stunning wine. And we had the Alta Rioja 809. Uh, the I green label one. Yeah, the green label one, which was pretty amazing. And also the one that we found at, oh, the, yeah. that, at that restaurant yeah, that we had last night. Um, which is amazing, which I think is called the Conto or something. I'll put it in the show notes for anyone that wants to see it. You know, going back to, to that thing about having the best seat in the house, uh, when we were in Spain about two years ago, a, a Spanish friend of ours gave us an introduction to Jorge Muga, who's one of the Mugas. And when he knew we were a friend of uh, Susanna's, he invited us all for lunch. You remember you came? Oh yeah. He cooked us lunch in the winery and gave us a whole day tour and then suggested we go to a couple of restaurants in San Sebastian. And so it's, it's those connections. I remember I was the designated driver that day. <laughs> well behaved. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes, no, I was. Um, so are you guys into YouTube or Instagram? How do you, how do you sort of taking up the technology, are you guys using that? Are you embracing it? Do you like it? Do you like these YouTube influences? Oh, and... I, 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 I love YouTube. It's extraordinary, you know, the, um, it's how I work stuff out, pretty much. You know, the go-to reference um, 
me personally, I don't I don't make YouTube uh, material, but and all, and similarly, um, Instagram. I, I, I love it and I, I can see the enormous potential. Unfortunately for me, I, I don't have the time to do it. I, you know, I'm, I'm not that sort of personality. I don't need to. So, um, I wish that I could. I'd like to be able to do it, but um, it's not really the way I operate. You know, I, I, going back to the equipment sort of thing, I, I kind of have this philosophy of like, I do what works for me and I'm quite comfortable. You know, I, I think a lot of people think I should be doing this or I should be doing that. You know, I do that, but uh, but I but I've realised, you know, I I am who I am and I operate the, the way I do, and and I'm okay with that. Seems so. to work. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It works for me. Um, so, what about you, Mill? I virtually never. I'm the generation that never goes to YouTube. Um, I do use Instagram. I quite enjoy Instagram because of the. Just the pictorial nature of it, mm -hmm. and my partner, she's not into any of them, and yet she goes to Instagram, and I, I don't have anything really much to do with Facebook. Uh, I think Facebook has caused so many bloody problems in this world, both with false news and 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 particularly young women. You know, if you didn't get a thousand likes, you're no good. Yeah, it's yeah. just a load of bullshit. I'd agree um, with that. So, and I have three Facebook accounts. Somebody hacked into it. I've got three. I tell you what, try and shut a fucking Facebook account down. Yeah, yeah. It's all virtually uh, possible. So yeah. I've got three, and I get asked to be my own friend. <laughs> That's By myself. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Would you be my friend? And, and get told, will I please upload a picture of myself? Yeah. I have noticed you do have a couple of you Facebook should accounts. You should send selfies to yourself. Yeah, well. <laughs> But well, I do enjoy it. I do enjoy Instagram, and I run a little blog now, and I, as a discipline, upload a couple of pictures every month of the people I've interviewed, just as a discipline. Yeah. Um, and I try not to upload too many pictures of Myrtle the dog. No, that's oh, you can do a few of that. That's, that's, that's easy, okay. Yeah. Um, and what are you guys into right now? What are you reading? Podcasts? Oh. Are you anything? Anything? Uh, like I, I love. YouTube and podcasts, and I'm basically into that. But you know, are you guys, is there any go to podcasts that you really love or any books that you're into at the moment? I just finished David Lynch, you know, the director. Yep. Uh, he, this biography of David Lynch, extraordinary man. Like, um, probably perceived in the wider world as a film director, but an artist, an absolute artist. Um, couldn't put it down. Uh, again, somebody who. Uh, he just worked his own way, and I, 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 you know, I'm drawn to characters like that. I sort of, I identified a lot with this book, and podcasts, a um, couple of meditation podcasts that, that I'm really into. I just, oh, yeah, good. Yeah. Do you know the names of the the meditation podcast? Meditation called, podcast. Yeah. Um, and Newton. Let me just not much on podcasts. Uh, I read a lot of newspapers. Mm. I'll edit that out. What's that? <laughs> Old technology. I'll edit that yeah, out. Well, we can only shoot for 30 minutes and, you know, so... Well, we haven't been... 1845. Yeah. So, you don't... So, don't, you're on newspapers? I read newspapers and magazines. Newspapers, newspapers? But online. 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 You, both. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I, um... Something's beeping. Lots of fun. Uh, I subscribe to the Australian newspaper and get the weekend and read the rest of online. I subscribe to The Guardian. Mm -hmm. Which I find pretty good. Um, I uh, I don't read many books. I'm halfway through Jimmy Barnes' this life story, which I'm finding fascinating because he grew up working uh, class boy. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. He grew up in Elizabeth um, and Rosewater. Yeah, fascinating. Um, don't do Twitter. I, I, I the thing that annoys me the most about the social media or YouTube or whatever is that they are totally unregulated. You can say whatever you like there totally. and it can become news and there's no regulation whatsoever which is what I like about the mainstream media because except in countries where they're censored most of the time there's some self-regulation. Self yeah. So I'm old-fashioned I, I, I choose to but for ethical reasons, choose not to get involved in any of the online 
social media stuff. You know, Twitter's the same. It's all just opinions. And my father was a journalist. And uh, uh, often the opinions of the wrong people. Exactly. That's what I, you know, um, anybody's got a platform, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately. now. And they're, they're always, you know, often people with an axe to grind yep. or something. So, I, I mean, I'm the generation of Twitter and I don't really understand Twitter. I mean, I don't, I've yeah. never really got into it. I've never really followed it. And it's like, I don't know, I like Instagram and Facebook has its place, but Twitter, I don't know, it just seems like people having a rant. Well, <laughs> my father was a highly regarded journalist and he, I remember him saying to me in the latter years of his life, he says, he said, I'm over social media and all that. And he said, and the thing about journalists now, you know, you think about the most powerful journalists in this country or the world, often they are self-opinionated so-and-sos who don't actually report the news. Mm. They just report their opinion. Mm. And Dad used to say, the trouble with journalism now, journalism now is the reporters have forgot their reporters and they all want to have an opinion and they've all got to be good looking. True. Mm. Okay, best thing you've bought in the last year under 200 bucks. Anything, oh, any, anything, easy. cameras, yeah, no, power drill, like a, whatever. Like a, um, you want to lead off? No, I oh, no, a, a back roller. Oh, uh, yes, you know yes, the, um, I saw it in Madrid, yeah. yeah. I nicked it out of the gym, the, the one here. Yeah, the, but I was traveling with that one, but I forgot it. Yeah. You know, you've got, you got because I travel a lot, um, uh, it's difficult to, but you can buy them at Kmart for 20 bucks, you yeah, know, yeah. like it's a, and, uh, I've got a couple in Madrid. You know, the, they're the torture rollers. The job's very physical. You've got to stay in shape. So, Apart from wine, which I often spend 200 bucks on, I don't really buy that many things. Well, the, 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 the best thing Emery and I just bought is she's teaching me to garden, and we bought a Ryobi whipper snipper for 120 bucks. <laughs> Bunnings. And Bunnings, perfect. And it's got a battery on it, so she doesn't have a oh, board. Nice. Oh, nice. Good. Oh. Dyson, Dyson um, stick back in there. More than 200 bucks. No, I know. <laughs> Shit, yeah. I know. Right. Two Edit that one out. Okay. Um, you want the animal one? I've got the top of the line. I, I... And also, this, well, this comes out of Tim Ferriss's book, but what, I mean, what morning routines would you guys have? Do you have any sort of standard routine that you do in the morning? Any sort of walks or, or yoga or stretching or? Yeah, I do. I do. I do yoga, stretching, pretty much. Um, not religiously, but um, a good three, four times a week uh, mm -hmm. in, in in the morning. Um, and again, um, you know what I do is incredibly physical, and I and I and I have to. I, I think I said this the other day. I I often. Uh, it's a balance. Do, do, do I want to do it? No, but I have to do it. It's like it's it, you know like. Um, and I feel good. Yeah. So, what about you, Milton? Since we had our new pup, I'm up most mornings <laughs> at six because she wants to play. And I usually get up so that Emery can sleep in and I can have a cup of tea and I go and do a couple hours on the computer. Um, I stretch a little bit and I think what Hugh said is on the money. I don't think many people who yeah. have, who've never done it have any comprehension of how physical photography can be. You do a day's commercial photography, man, you've climbed up ladders, walked about 10 miles, mm. carry gear, it's but mentally stressful. I find it, it's not, well, I just, I personally find it's, I try and stay very fit, do a lot of bike riding, a lot of gym, and uh, I find when you're working, you don't actually think about what you're doing, and oh, you yeah. can hurt yourself really easily, yeah. because you, you, you're in the zone, yeah. you're concentrating, <clears throat> and you just move and you do something, and you can pull a muscle in your back or whatever, and you're out. That'll that work. I, no, I'm well. We, we're all well aware of that. I, that. That's as Milton touched on. Others aren't, and it's um, you know, it, <clears throat> there would not be a working day go by where I'm not lying down on the ground physically, like you know, trying to find that very specific angle. And you know, it's 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 not it's not the exception. It's yeah, it's, that's it all yeah. the time. You know. Um, now, just, got, just touching on that, that, you could go back to the Sony. The best thing about that Sony is that oh, it's screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So I can be yeah. like, have it low. Because prior to that, that would have been me. On the ground. Yeah, you know, stretching your neck. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've warmed up now. Oh, wow. um, everyone's feeling good? Home straight. Okay, Dad, this is for you. Um, you've been in the industry, what, 45, 50 years? 50 years this yeah. year. Okay, um, predominantly in Australia. How have you seen the industry change in the last 50 years? And how do you see it progressing in the next 10? I know it's if just, I just want your broad opinion of the industry now and how and, and the next 10 years of what, what might happen. Um, there's more photographs being taken now than ever. I think I saw some statistic the other day that in any one day more photographs are taken yeah, yeah. in the first 50 years of photography. Yeah, yeah. And so people, photography has just become a part of your life. So I, I think that people have a better understanding of what good photography is. A lot of people don't want to pay for it. And I go back to what Kim Martin, a friend of mine who runs an advertising agency, and he's also a drummer in a band, says, he says, your industry is becoming like the music industry. You know, a very small percentage, you know, half a percent might make a really good living like the Rolling Stones or whoever. And then maybe a couple of percent will make a reasonable living. The rest of them will have a second job. And they do music, he does music because he loves music. And photography is becoming more like an art. You know, there's not too many artists make a living. Mm. Often they'll have a second job. And I see that our industry, you know, you see it in the AIPP. I think something like 70% of the people who are members of it Photography is not their main source of income. That's a really interesting statistic. I remember you telling me that. That's, that's surprising, isn't it? Yeah. But, and so, but but whether whether that's by choice, I, yeah, I, it's not. It's you know. Well, it could be. It could be. But a lot of the um, higher end advertising uh, and commercial shit is. It would be very interesting if you looked at how many were actually making a reasonable living 15 years ago mm. and how many are there now making a reasonable living. And I think it would be, it'd be quite staggering. Whether they're a member of anything, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, but, you know, it all changed when we made that transition to digital capture. Oh, absolutely. In the early 2000s, because you didn't need, a, you didn't have to have technical skills. You might have, might have, maybe the biggest technical skill you had to have to produce a sharp image was no focus camera and use Photoshop. No, most definitely. Do you remember when you worked in London what your day rate was for one of the newspapers or for the Evening Standard or for the, uh, the, the Daily Express? It was 15 quid a day and that was back in 1973. Okay. And I was earning over 100 quid a week. Okay. 100 yeah. quid a week back then was pretty good. Mm. When I was working in London in 2006 for the Times, it was 135 a shift and 160 at the Sun, and it hasn't changed. Well, in, in Australia, 2018, it's the same. Well, in Australia, it's gone down. I was talking to a press photographer the other day, and News Limited retrenched most of their photographers, I think. I think uh, all of them. No, they've still got about four or five at the Times, and I spoke to some of the other day, and there's about six at News Limited, I think. There's a, I'm not sure how accurate that is. But the day rate, when I was part of the AJA, Australian Journal Association Freelance Committee, back in the mid 70s, we pushed for a day rate of a magazine photographer of six to $800 a day. Um, I think the magazine photographers are still getting that. The press photographers, I'm, I'm told, are now working through AAP and Getty, and they're not getting much more than three or 400 bucks a day, and they've got to buy all their own gear, all their own insurances. Now, I'm not sure how accurate those figures are, but that's, the, ru that's the rumour I've heard. So, you know, Mr. Getty or Mr. AAP can correct that if they like. But mm. I mean, $300 a day. Who are you saying? Uh, these, are, these are experienced press photographers. I bumped into them one of them. This is where we go back to have a second job. I bumped into one of them the other day at the good guys and he's a warehouse worker two days a week and he, he, he earns as much money being a warehouse worker as he does doing two shifts a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a love, you know. It's I'd rather go and take photographs than work in the warehouse, but so it's a choice you make. Definitely. But one second.
This is a joke. I think I've run out of... Oh, no. No? No, no, no. The, the, uh, the green light is on the back of... What a... What so an error. What a, yeah, there's a... There's a design error well, for that $25 mic. Well, you might want to incorporate a mirror back there, mate. Mm. Shut up, you. Okay. okay. For you, oh. similar question, um, but you know, you're a bit different. You've worked in America, you've worked in Australia. Um, the first part of this question, how do you find, what's the main differences between America and Australia working, um, say in Sydney or, or New York? And also, how have you seen the industry change? Do you think the American market is still going gangbusters or is it slowing down at the same speed as Australia? How do you see both, both sides of the equation. All right. The first, the first um, part of that question: what, 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 what may or may not be the difference. But what, one of the things that comes to mind is um, what, what I really appreciate about appreciate about working in the US is um, uh, they value my ideas. They, they like. I'm not just told what to do. I'm asked, how would you do it? How, what, how would you solve this problem? And that's. You know that's that uh, that that's where you should be coming at it, uh, mm -hmm. not not as opposed to well we've got this much money. Here you go. You know the commodification of photographers. You know because um, you, you, you're not you're not apples and apples. You know that there's there's styles. People used to have styles, and um, you know I I, I I I've got to say it for myself. Um, I deliver. I deliver all the. You know, there's no. Ex I don't. I don't give excuses. It's like it's good. It's uh, there's a consistency. Yeah, it has to be good every time. Well, you know, yeah. and um, I my my best compliment in in the last few years all the time. So you know, um, we should have got you the first time. You know, uh, I I <clears throat> when I go into something, uh, it, it works, um, and. The, to the second point there, is it changing there as well? Uh, yeah, it is. But w w what you have to realise is the, the, just the sheer economic differences between Australia. You know, the 25 million people, 300 plus million in the US. Um, all, you know, the, these downward trends, they're, they're, they're all there in the US, but they're slower, much slower to, 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 to come in. And also, uh, going back... They, they, I, my feeling is they understand the value of money a bit better. I, 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 I just, they just have more of it as well. Well, there's more, more of it, but, but, but um, some of them have more of it. A lot of them don't have any. No, no, I know, but they're willing to spend it. They're, 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 the ones who had it. Yeah, yeah, they're willing, to, but um, they value me. Mm. They value what I do. It's not seen as, um, you know. Um, let me give you an example, uh, and this is this is the highest. You know, image is everything. Look at look at Apple computers. Uh, it's all the, the, the image sells those products. You know, they're extraordinary products as well. But uh, how's photojournalism going in America? I mean, image is everything, and so Apple uses it to make pretty pictures. How's not good. Exactly. Um, it's all about image. But that's under that's, but, but that, that that's one that's how the avenue is going in America. You not know, just but, but, but that's not just America. That's worldwide yeah, trend. Yeah, yeah. Also, that, and you know that that sort of unfortunately the press is under attack worldwide. You know, um, look at look at our man Trump. Um, you know, the enemy of the people. For God's sake, it's, yeah. all my friends get their news from Facebook. Yeah, well, that's so, like, what's happened. Oh, I saw it on Facebook. There's been a terrorism attack, or there's something's yeah. happened. Everyone, no one, even my friends don't. Well, a lot of my friends don't read the newspapers. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I, you know, we we we're a generational difference. That's the thing. I I, I tend to, you know, what there's a there, there, there's a standards um, issue there. What, what what I love about say New York Times or whatever. It's like, those people have high standards. They, they don't. They don't just. No. You know, they have fact checking. They they yeah. don't just mm. have an opinion and say, well, this is what it is. You know. Mm. They, they, uh, there's a reason um, uh, NPR and um, 
PBS, and th these are the public broadcasters. They're the most trusted institutions in the US. It's like the ABC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 it staggers me when they're under attack. It's like I I I, I believe these people before and after most politicians. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Going back to uh, three hundred million people in America versus twenty five in Australia. Dad used to work for Coopers a little bit. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you did some great campaigns for for Coopers. Coopers the brewery. Yes. Yes. Um, and I remember when I was in America for the Fourth of July. Uh, what's the main What's the main beers in in America? Budweiser. Uh, Budweiser. Yeah, I think it was Budweiser Coors. or Coors. I think it was Coors. Coors Light that sold lackeys. sold more beer on the Fourth of July than Coopers sold all year. <laughs> yeah. And that's it puts just, it in the, it puts that's it in just the, like, okay, so if you're doing a World War, uh, you know, an American campaign for Coors, or you're doing one for Coopers, you know, you could just see where, yeah, where yeah, it goes. Correct, correct. There's, there's so much more at stake, right? Uh, the returns are... Returns are bigger, and they've also just got bigger budgets. They've got more money. They just, it's just yeah. uh, economics to give them. Yeah, I know, I was just... Like yeah. your audience, your audience in the States is not just... So, so you have 300 plus million in the States, right? Then you have next door Canada, and yeah. and beyond that, a worldwide audience because people look to the US. You know, the, the, most of those multinational companies are oh, in the US. Yeah, 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 yeah. The interesting thing about that is, and I'm not sure whether it's true for America, but I think it is from last time. There's there's a huge number of small microbreweries making craft beer. Oh yeah, and and Coop, one of the biggest Cooper's biggest markets is the west coast of America because their beer isn't fine with fish finding. So the vegans and the vegetarians will drink it. Yeah. It isn't what? It's not fine with fish findings. Seriously, with the big campaign 20 years ago, was I photographed a fish that was dissected and they used it as a full page ad of this fish without a stomach. And the quote from one of the Coopers was, we're vegan friendly because we don't, it's, I think it's called fish fine. fine. Wow. These are the wine industry as well, it's fine or something. Google it and you'll find yeah, it. Yeah, we'll have a look at Google. Okay, and this is for both of you guys. What would your advice be to your, now what you know, to your 25 year old self, and also what would your advice be to anyone starting out in photography? Two prompt question, you start with. Well, probably the same advice I tried to give you 20 years ago. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't <laughs> You didn't listen to me. Um, uh, I think if you are going to endeavour to make a living as a photographer, as Hugh said earlier, the picture taking is a very small place. So you've got to know what you're doing, you've got to take nice pictures or effective illustrative pictures. But it's all about networking and, and just giving 120% and understand, and you know, the thing I remember also about something a photographer once said to me, he said, you know about photographers? He said, they don't listen to anything. They just have often their own visual opinion and they actually don't listen to what they're trying to illustrate. Mm. You know, when I was working in newspapers, if we went to a country town to do a story, the first place we'd go to is the pub and we wouldn't take pictures for a day or so. We, we would actually try and work out what the hell we were doing before we did anything. And that's all about networking mm. and understanding a brief. So I think it's you know it's a lot more than just taking pretty pictures. And you know the whole marketing thing now, particularly with social media, which I don't understand, but I know people who do use it very effectively. Most definitely. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that I don't need to do that. Um, just on, on so I don't know what advice I would give, but the. I, one thing I suspect, no, is I, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. You know, it's not doom and gloom, um, it's just different. It's very different mm -hmm. and, and it, we, the, the technology will always be changing. Yeah, um, the skill set does not necessarily change. I, you know, I, an assistant the other day, I said, I, 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 would, I would work on being a good director. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that's not just um, um, photograph or or, or film, you know, that, that ability to communicate with, with if, you're, if you're working with people. 
I, I used to and shoot a lot of stills in movies. Yeah. And I learned an awful lot from watching good directors. Yeah. You set everything up and you select the, I, the people to come after. I'll tell you what I learned. You, you learn more often than what not to do, what, mm. what, you, what you don't want to do. I don't want to work like that guy. You know, I've seen some terrible directors as well. However, um, and, and that, that's the interesting thing, you know, when, if you're a good photographer, you're already halfway there to being a great director. You know, because you understand uh, camera angles and uh, you understand a lot of the technology. It's taking that um, that, that that ability to just just you, you you know what you want to achieve. The the tools that you use are, are, are they're, they're, they're chop and change. You know, like plug and play. It's interesting what you're saying there. Two other things that I remember distinctly about very, two very successful photographers, a guy called George Apostolides in Melbourne, he said, don't go to school, don't, don't study photography, go and study art. Go to the museums and look at art. And a chap called Peter Adams used to say, don't go and study photography, go and study acting. Go and hook up and, become, and, and learn how, what it feels like to be on the other side of the camera. Yeah, maybe, really maybe, but but the, 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 never to never to, to, to eliminate that that base understanding yeah. of of this is what this tool does. You know, under, you know, um, understand what 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 what's being done. Mm. I mean, on when but I was look, shooting, you know, you you, you, you switch me on to um, look at casing. Nice that. Nice that, right? Okay, and the, the fantastic YouTube video there, is, you know, of his. I, I don't remember what it's called, but Make it's it a, count. Ma, no, 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 not that. No, oh, what do, you do say, what you can't. Do, do exactly, what you can't. Do, don't worry about. Everyone's fixated. Like I need a Sony A9. No, you don't. You can shoot it on your iPhone. Yeah. You can, you know, like you can. Con content is king. Con the, the idea is the more important thing. Forget, you know. Look, look. Hollywood's full of that shit. Spend one hundred and fifty million dollars on a dumb idea. It's not going to make that dumb idea look good. Whereas low budget film, great idea. You're glued to it. You're absolutely glued to it. Now, take that sort of thing. You know, Casey. Perfect point there. Shot all that stuff on nothing. It's brilliant. Can't yeah. take your eyes off of it. You know, like it's um. It's very punk. I love it. Yeah, no, I mean, as a as a creative, he's amazing. As a Cameraman, I probably wouldn't use him as a cameraman because he, he, he's not a cameraman. He's a creator. Okay, so, um, so to, that, that that swings me back to that point. It's like um, good director, amazing somebody, director. That's amazing like, director. Like, 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 that, the idea yeah. is what's count. He does have an understanding of what's going on with that thing, but that but at, then he reaches a certain level and he's he's got a budget. He yeah. Bring in, yeah. Bring in someone who's really good. I mean, there's there's two guys I watch, Casey Neistat and uh, Pete. Uh, yeah. Peter. I remember. You, uh, I can't remember his name. <laughs> uh, I'll put it in the link. But uh, he's amazing. He's he's uh, Peter McKinnell. Okay. Peter McKinnell. He's amazing. He's he does great YouTube videos and his content is beautiful. His grading's amazing. He really understands it and he teaches it very well. Um, but I enjoy watching Casey's movies better. Yeah, like it's not perfect. It's not really beautiful, but the content is amazing. It's always interesting. Yeah. See, we're swinging into the motion image there more more than anything. But the, but they're equally applied. You know that 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 that. What's the idea? What am I trying to do? And and that directing of people. You know that's that's my skill. I'm a I'm a really good director of people in front of the camera. You know, like it's something I. I uh, for a long, for the longest time, I would never have known that. But but through watching others, I realise you know I've got this great skill of putting people at ease. You know, getting them to do what I want. Yeah. Well, we're almost done. Um, Cooked. Yeah, I think we've done about fifty minutes. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure we're going to get that on YouTube. Um, Thank you for to edit that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll edit it a bit Please. down. Sorry, me stepping up and, and checking the audio. Um, thanks so much. I think it was very interesting. I, I think it was pretty painless. Um, and what we're talking about, content is king. Um, you know, we shot this on one camera, a cheap mic, a little light. Um, I hope it all works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope the audio is on and it's all worked. But, you know, content is king. And I think that 
I mean, I, I want to learn how to shoot videos and it's more about content for me. And if, if I make it easier, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. if, I, if something that is up 10 out of 10, it's perfect, it's 100%. Right? The chance of me, if I'm a perfectionist, getting it done, or I just think, oh, that's too hard, I'm not going to do that. So thanks for your time. Right. Um, and if you guys have any questions or anything or whatever, we can go and have, a, we going for lunch? Go and have a beer yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs>